In this video, we're going to talk about voltage, current, and resistance. So let's begin our discussion with voltage. What is voltage? Voltage is the electric potential energy difference per unit charge. The unit for voltage is the volt. One volt is equal to one joule of electric potential energy per one column of charge. So let's say if you have a 5 volt battery. That means that each column of charge carries 5 joules of energy, or there's 5 joules per 1 column of charge. And so the electrons, they have more energy when they're operating at a higher voltage. A 10 volt battery can pump 10 joules of electric potential energy to every 1 column of charge. And so voltage is related to electric potential energy. Now what about current? How can we describe current? Current represents the flow of electrons. It tells you the rate at which electrons are flowing. Current is represented by the symbol I. It's equal to the charge divided by the time. The unit for current is the amp. One amp is equal to one column of charge that flows per second. If you have five amps of current, then you have five columns of charge flowing per second. Now, when I think of current, I think of water flowing. And so water can flow very slowly or it can flow very quickly. And so you could think of that as current. If you have a lot of water flowing at any given point, the current is high. If you have a small amount of water or trickle flowing through, then the current is low. And so electric current and the flow of water, they have some similarities in that instance. Now the next topic we have is resistance. And when you think of resistance, what do you think of? Resistance they can be provided in a circuit by something called or devices called resistors and they resist the flow of current. Resistance is measured in the units ohms represented by the Greek symbol omega and that's basically what you need to know about resistors. They resist the flow of current. Now here's a question for you. Which type of wire will have more resistance? Let's say a long wire or a short wire. Well you know that a long wire will have more resistance than a short wire because the electrons they have a greater distance to travel through and so longer wires have more resistance than short wires. You have a greater distance to travel to get from one part of the circuit to the other. Now here's another question for you. Which one will have more resistance? a thin wire or a thick wire. It turns out that the thin wire has more resistance than a thick wire. And to illustrate this, resistance and current, they're inversely related. As you increase the resistance of a circuit, the current decreases. So the rate at which electrons can travel through the circuit decreases if you increase the resistance. And think of a highway with cars flowing. Think of the cars as being the electrons. In which case will the rate at which cars flow through any given point be greater? Let's say if you have a one-lane highway or let's say a seven-lane highway. By the way, the green part here represents resistance, not current. So just keep that in mind. In a one-lane highway, there's not many cars that can get through. And so the current, which I'm going to highlight in red, will be low in a one-lane highway. However, in a seven-lane highway, you can get more cars um, passing through at any given point in a seven-lane highway. So the current will be high, but the resistance will be uh, low in a seven-lane highway because a lot of cars can get through. And so think of resistance as being that one-lane highway. 
the cars are restricted on traveling on that highway. But in the seven lane highway, there's not much resistance. And so you can get a lot of cars, a lot of current flowing through. So keep this in mind, resistance and current, they are inversely related. Now there is an equation that relates voltage, current and resistance together. And this equation is known as Ohm's law. Now, let's say if the resistance is kept constant, what's going to happen to the current in the circuit if we increase the voltage? Increase in the voltage will cause an increase in current. And to illustrate this, imagine if you have, let's say, a pipe that's filled with water. And so you have water in this pipe. Now, what's going to happen if you increase the pressure on this side. So let's say on the left side, the pressure is high. And on the right side, the pressure is low. But imagine this pipe is completely filled with water. So we really don't have any uh, space here, but it's just filled with water. If the pressure on the left side is high, then the water is going to be forced to move in one direction it's going to flow from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. And the same is true with, um, with voltage. Current will flow from a region of high voltage to a region of low voltage. So let's say if the potential on the left side is 10 volts and on the right side, the potential is two volts, in which direction will the current flow? Well, the voltage is, well, the electric potential, rather, is high on the left side and low on the right side. So the current will flow from a region of high electric potential to a region of low electric potential. By the way, current and electron flow, they're different. Let's say if the electrons are flowing in this direction, conventional current is defined as the flow of positive charge. So it's flowing in the other direction. So even though current flows from high potential to low potential, electrons, they flow from low potential to high potential. Electrons are more attracted to a positive charge as opposed to a negative charge. So they're going to flow towards the more positive side. But when dealing with current, I'm going to focus on conventional current, the flow of positive charge, even though negatively charged electrons are flowing in a circuit. Now, let me give you another picture. Let's say this is negative 12 volts on the left and negative 18 volts. Let's make it, uh, actually, let's make this negative 4 volts on the right. So, in which direction is the current flowing? That is the flow of positive charge. Is it flowing to the right or is it flowing to the left? Feel free to pause the video and think about it. Now, which side has the high potential and which side has the low potential? On a number line, which number is greater, negative 12 or negative 4? If we draw a number line, let's say this is 0, this is 5, this would be negative 4, and negative 12 will be somewhere over here. So the value increases as you go towards the right on a number line. So therefore, negative 4 is higher on a number line than negative 12. And so current is going to flow from a region of high potential to a region of low potential. In this case, it's going to flow towards the left, towards the lower potential, which is negative 12 volts. So current flows to the more negative side or the less positive side, as in the case of this example. Here, uh, this side is more negative, so current is going to flow in that direction. So current flows from high potential to low potential. Now, here's a question for you. Let's focus on this picture. What is the voltage across the resistor? You need to understand the difference between electric potential and voltage. Now, let's call this point point A and this point point B. Now the electric potential at point A is positive 10 volts. 
the electric potential at point B is 2 volts. Voltage is the difference between the electric potentials of two points. So it's the electric potential difference of two points. So the voltage across the resistor is the difference between A and B. So in that case, the voltage across that resistor, we can call it VR, is 8 volts. It's the difference between those two points. Now what about the voltage across this resistor? It's also 8 volts. Now sometimes this could be negative 8, dependent on how you connect it. So let's say if you connect the positive terminal of, let's say, a meter to point A and the negative terminal to point B, it's going to read positive 8 volts. However, if you connect the negative terminal of a meter to point A and a positive terminal of the meter to point B, the current will basically be reversed in that meter. And so the voltage that it's going to read will be negative 8. So depending on the way you connect it, you can get a reading of positive 8 or negative 8. But if you want to get a positive reading, connect the positive terminal to the high potential part of the circuit and the negative terminal to the low potential part of the circuit. And then you'll get a positive reading. Now let's go back to this. So we said that if we increase the voltage in a circuit, the current will increase. And also, if you increase the resistance of a circuit, the current will decrease. So make sure you understand uh, these statements from Ohm's law. So voltage is directly related to current, and resistance is inversely related to current. So if you double the voltage in a circuit, with everything else being the same, the current will double. If you double the resistance, the current will reduce by a factor of two. It will be half of what it used to be. If you triple the voltage, the current will triple. If you triple the resistance, the current will be one-third of its original value. Now let's work on some practice problems. A 12-volt battery is connected across a 4-ohm resistor. How much current will flow in a circuit? So this is the electrical symbol of a battery. And let's draw the electrical symbol of a resistor, which looks like that. And so this is a 12 volt battery, and we have a 4 ohm resistor. Now this is the negative terminal of the battery, and this is the positive terminal. So current will flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. But keep in mind, the electrons are flowing in the opposite direction. Now using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, we can get the answer. I like using it in this form because I can easily solve for any variable that I need, just using some uh, simple algebra. So the voltage is 12, the current in the circuit is what we're looking for, and the resistance is 4. So to get I by itself, to solve for the value of I, I need to divide both sides by 4. On the right side, 4 divided by 4 is 1, giving me just I. On the left side, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Thus, the current in a circuit is 3 amps, and that's the answer. Number two, a battery is connected across a light bulb with an internal resistance of 75 ohms. Using an ammeter, the current flowing in a circuit was measured to be 120 milliamps. If you see MA, that's milliamps. What is the voltage of the battery? So feel free to pause the video and draw a circuit with the appropriate elements and then solve it. Now let's start with the battery. So here's the battery and here is the ammeter. You can just put an A in a circle and then let's draw the light bulb, which this is one way you can draw the light bulb. Or you can draw a light bulb like this if you want. And let's turn the light bulb on. So what is the voltage of the battery? Now the ammeter detects a current of 120 milliamps. How can we convert that to amps? 
Now it's important to understand that one amp is equal to a current of a thousand milliamps. So to convert milliamps to amps, you need to divide by a thousand. So if we take 120 and divide it by a thousand, all we need to do is take the decimal point and move it three spaces to the left. And that will give us a current of 0.12 amps. And so that's a quick way in which you can convert milliamps to amps. Now the resistance of the light bulb, we said it was 75 ohms. So now we have everything that we need in order to calculate the voltage of the battery. So V equals IR. So the current is 0.12. The resistance is 75, and so we just need to multiply those two. So 0.12 times 75, what we have is a 9-volt battery. So whenever you're using Ohm's Law, just remember, if V is in volts, then the current has to be in amps, and the resistance has to be in ohms. Let's say if the resistance was in ohms, but if you plug in milliamps instead, then this will give you millivolts. So you have to be careful when you're using different units, but just to be on the safe side, use volts for V, amps for the current, and ohms for the resistance. Number three, a hair dryer pulls a current of 0.8 amps from a 120 volt power source. What is the internal resistance of the hair dryer? So let's go ahead and go directly to the formula. V equals IR. So we have the voltage. It's 120 volts. We have the current, 0.8 amps. And our goal is to solve for R, the internal resistance of the hairdryer. So V is 120. The current is 0.8. And let's calculate R. So to get R by itself, we just need to divide both sides by 0.8. And so 120 divided by 0.8 is 150 and so the answer is 150 ohms and that's the resistance of the hair dryer and so it's very simple to use ohms law particularly in this format you can easily calculate the voltage the current or the resistance now perhaps you've seen this symbol before maybe like a triangle or something with V on top and I and R on the bottom. So let's say if you wish to calculate R. Looking at what um, the stuff that's left over, let's say if you put your thumb on R, you can see that the resistance is voltage divided by current. Now let's say if you block off the current, if you put your thumb on a current, you can see that the current is voltage divided by resistance. Now if you put your thumb on, let's say, the voltage, then that tells you that Voltage is current times resistance, which we could see in this form. But let's say if you divide by I, the voltage divided by current is equal to resistance if you need to calculate R. Or if you need to calculate current, is voltage over resistance. So those are the other forms if you prefer uh, to use it that way. But if you just use this formula, you could find all three just by doing a little algebra. But for those of you who don't like algebra, you may want to uh, use this chart if it helps. I think it does help, but it just, it all depends on you which method is easier for you. But thanks for watching.